Recovering from the pandemic, something of course that shocked the entire world always presents its challenges to airlines in different regions. The Asian market, you could argue, have been one that have continued to be hit the hardest. While some markets rebound, a quick peek into Hong Kong highlights how restrictions are killing some airlines. And of course, ambition for Asia is to reach a point of normality eventually as well. For Japan Airlines focusing on the coverage in today's video, I'm exploring some recent results that highlight how the effects of the pandemic are causing limitations to their operations and in a rather sad and frustrating manner, especially for international services. At a recent aviation conference, the Japan Airlines Vice President of Strategy and Research commented interestingly enough on the differences between domestic and international market recovery, something of great fascination and across worldwide markets, we've generally seen the trends that domestic recovery comes first, as these were the first restrictions to ease, and then subsequently after that we see the slow return of international travel demand, as while in some instances countries' borders can reopen, difficulties were experienced experienced in establishing a solid route network to global destinations, as some countries were, as we know, still in lockdowns. Qantas certainly felt the brunt of that, with Asia being largely closed when Australia opened their borders again, and I'm sure you're aware of just how important the Oceania to Asia market is for Australian and also Asian carriers. It's huge. Japan Airlines notes that it operates at 65% of its international capacity, in reference to what it was before the pandemic. However, what is very important, and probably a more important number than the 65% international capacity, is they're actually only seeing 40% of pre-pandemic levels in this area, and it's very much stagnant for them. They're struggling to get that growth. It comes as restrictions in certain locations, and even restrictions in Japan, are really preventing Japan Airlines from spreading their wings in the way that maybe they would have liked by now. Nevertheless, what the airline can be encouraged by is its domestic levels, which are now operating at 100% pre-pandemic capacity. Demand is still a little bit lower than that 100%, but it's very solid signs and something they can build upon and work upon. And I'm sure with the proper reopening of borders and the influx of international travelers, that demand is going to increase. Currently, Japan Airlines does face the struggle of a daily cap on arrivals into the country and many other difficulties trying to gain access to the country overall, from booking with travel agents to visas and you can probably imagine everything else in between. Talks are progressing as per reports from local media that I found on making this more accessible again to visit. However, what has to be mentioned is, until that can be done, Japan Airlines are going to no doubt face a frustrating road to recovery in an international market sense, and one of course they'll hope that can change as soon as possible for the greater good and future, while also the sustainability of the business. To Daniel, got to cast with B, Elliot, Leslie Austin, Nine, Will Jaden, Al Walid, The Flash Cuban, Neil Don Stefan, and Jam. Thanks for being cabin crew members here on DJ's Aviation. Now, now, if you have any thoughts on specific markets struggling to really rebound from the pandemic for a host of different reasons, especially now, of course, the focus being on Japan Airlines, you can drop your thoughts down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Do take care. Do also be safe, and I will see you next time.